Do you guys have a jukebox? Sorry, we don't. Really? Okay. Can I get an Alabama Slammer? Yeah. Just let me get my DeLorean and I'll drive us back to the 1998 shithole you're looking for. What can I get you? Drunk? Welcome to episode 39 of Behind Bars, Cocktails and Wasted Nights. I'm your host, Greg. I've been working as a bartender for over 20 years, and over those years, I've seen a lot. My goal here is to share some of those high and low lights with you. Quick warning, this podcast contains sex, drugs, and some language that isn't suitable for anyone under 21 years of age, so you gotta have some ID. Before we get started, comp shots go out to Chris Erm, Tenderlovin0522, CP Macaulay8, and Chloe Irene123. Thanks for the great five star written reviews. I'm truly touched, and not in an inappropriate kind of way. I'm touched in a pleasurable, I didn't do it myself kind of way. Folks, if you'd like to cut the line and get buzzed before the rest of the crowd, do what they did and yelp me with five stars and some kind words about the podcast. You can do it on Spotify now, too. That's a super new feature, so please hop over there and make me look like I know what I'm doing. It really does get the word out, and I think the people out there need to know about the shenanigans and goings-on of this ridiculous industry we call service. Okay, on to the episode. For this one, I interviewed bartender slash DJ Tyler. He's a badass booze slinger and an even better DJ. In fact, I thought his tracks were so sweet, I'm going to use them as bumpers for the intro and the outro. Seriously. When I heard them, I thought two things. They were way better than I thought they'd be, and what are you doing bartending? But what do I know? I'm too old to take Molly at EDM festivals without being thought of as a creeper. Point is, the shit's great, and my movie mind immediately went to fight scene film score stuff. Seriously. Anyways, Tyler cut his teeth at a college bar in Dallas, so we're going to do his signature drink he created there. It's called a Tully Bomb, a play on the Irish car bomb, which is now called an Irish drop shot, BT dubs, and that's probably a long overdue name change. Anyway, the Tully Bomb. Into a shot glass. Pour one and a quarter ounces of Tullamore Dew Irish whiskey and one quarter ounce of Irish cream. Carolyn's if you're thrifty. Drop that shot glass into a pint glass filled one third of the way with root beer and chug with your fraternity brothers after your first round of beer pong. Make sure you turn your ball cap visor backward for clearance. And, as Tyler says, it tastes just like a root beer float, and it's palatable for sissy college kids. Sissy. Great word. Oh, and as always, if you don't have any of that shit lying around, line up a couple rails, suck them up through your nose holes, down a shot of tequila, and settle in for the ride from Dallas to Denver. We'll chat at the end. Here's Tyler. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 39 of Behind Bars, Cocktails, and Wasted Nights. I'm here with my associate and co-worker, Tyler. Tyler is an amazing DJ, he's an amazing bartender, and uh, he's got some wild hair, kind of looks like a real-life anime character. We're kind of into that, it goes Fair. like way up, you know? Yeah. I always feel like, you know, you should be driving like Speed Racer or something like that, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> so, so how long have you been married? In a few months, it'll be fucking five years, dude. Five years, but oh, wow. We, we met, and, like, you know, the Rihanna song? We fell in love in a hopeless place. Oh, yeah. Um, she couldn't think of any other lyrics for that song? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but that's a great song. A, a lot of that's true, man. We uh, we we met each other at a co- at the bar adjacent to the bar that I got my chops at, and it's like a fuck. It's such a douchey fucking bar, dude. It's like a... Um, a cowboy frat boy like it, it wasn't the right bar and then so Skrillex comes on the radio and like we both are like singing yeah, you are cinema and it's like oh shit you know the words and then first thing that comes out of her mouth is like I'm going to Ultra Music Festival and it was like no shit I have a ticket too I'm going um, we courted each other for a month uh, she made out with a couple of my friends so I was kind of like turned off about it 
she's gonna hear that and be like, "Fuck you for saying that." <laughs> no, I mean, it's a thing. It happens. Uh, it's history. I mean, but um, means it means something to you, you know. But uh, we ended up like it, were, it was a long courting process, and then we met at the festival and have been fucking inseparable since, man. That's amazing. It's been the wildest ride, and like, uh, just, she's been the greatest cheerleader all along, and like it. It's fucking, it's magic, man. It was, it's like she's the, your ride or die. Well, but the coolest thing is, is that like we also like I think the only app available at the time was like Plenty of Fish. You remember Plenty? Oh of, yeah, yeah, a lot of, yeah. You remember Plenty of Fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people <laughs> get murdered off of that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so like there was, there's was little options. There was no Tinder. There was no fucking Hinge. I, there might have been Match. dot com, but that was like for your grandparents type shit. I can't stand Tinder. I got on there for like a little while, and like my whole goal was like. Just aim for the servers, the flight attendants, and the hairstylists because they try harder. But it's like you, you just become a judge of people. You're like, oh, you, I want to fuck. I'm going to put you over here. You, trash pile, trash pile, trash pile. Oh, you, I want to fuck. Oh, we didn't match. You obviously put me in the trash pile yeah, earlier. Right? Go fuck yourself. It's awful. Well, yeah, I, I can't imagine because, like, I think that's a, I think that's the beauty of our relationship because it's like if we had met each other in this era, like, would we have even fucking been a thing? Because so she almost she, this was this came out later like you know a few months into our thing but uh, she almost didn't date me uh oh because because I'm fucking short what <laughs> seriously yeah she was like you know he's really cool he's really charismatic he's got fucking crazy hair but he's short and ah, shit. once you're laying down it it doesn't matter doesn't matter right <laughs> yeah it's um, all the same but uh, so I guess her friends convinced her to like yo give him a chance and fuck, dude. Ten years later. That's amazing. Ten years fucking later, man. No, you guys are awesome together, dude. I've, yeah, you're like one of those yeah. couples that are like, all right, maybe there is faith. Because, like, I don't want to get married because I would never, like, want to sentence anyone to a lifetime of me. And plus, I also have that thing of, like, I don't want to be part of any club that wants me as a member. Because I'm like, oh, if you like me, yeah. there's obviously something wrong with you. Yeah. And I don't know if I want to have that in my life. Well, yeah. And it's <laughs> and, and exactly as you're saying, it's like, like, so many people had, like, a tough time during, like, the lockdowns and the pandemic. And... Dude, I was getting paid to fuck off handsomely, do nothing, stay at home, party, hang out with my best friend. It being in the industry, especially like, because like she was in the industry for a long time also, right? That's not how we met, but we we both, you know, it's, it's so fucking lucrative, right? She has a fucking college degree and was making more in, in the business than her degree would warrant, right? Okay. Uh, she eventually got out and she has like big old job now and shit. Having this like opposite schedule... You know, we get like one day a week. Okay. And yeah, and that's that, tough. And like back to the Psalm shit, that's what like made the Psalm whole thing tough is that my one day off a week was Monday. And what was I doing on those Mondays? Blind blind tasting, fucking studying, whatever, whatever with this like friend group that also had a couple girls in it. And so it was just like there was tension there, right? Yeah. But like like you said, like ride or die. You know what I mean? Like it it it's like a it's definitely a unique situation. It's, like, tough. A lot of people don't know, like, as, like, someone in the industry, it's hard to, like, have a relationship with someone who's not in the industry because, first of all, just like you said, opposite schedules. Right away, it's a huge problem. Yeah. And then, uh, and then like, the lifestyle. Like, for example, I dated this one girl, uh, and she had a, a big girl job, and it was hilarious because, like, my lifestyle intersected with hers, which yeah. is, like, sort of like, I'm a citizen, I'm not a degenerate, but then right. when she hung out with me, we were degenerates. Oh, yeah. And here's how it ended. That relationship ended. <laughs> it's the fucking best, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't even say this because she knows who she is. So, yeah. anyway. Uh, Hopefully this is- you're not listening. We were having uh, we were having sex, and then right after uh, it was over, she started crying. And I'm like, oh, Never this, is, this is not the Never response I wanted. Yeah. And I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, nothing. And she gets up, she like runs naked to the bathroom and blows her nose, crying. And she's like, oh my god, I have a bloody nose. I have a butt plug in my ass and cum dripping down my leg. I need to change my life. And I started <laughs> dying laughing. I died laughing. And I should have been, like, more supportive. And you I understand. definitely should have. You definitely should have. But it was man. the funniest shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> so, like, I was like, I'm going to go. But but <laughs> also, but also like, if, like, like hilarious, right? Yeah. It's like, it's, sorry for having fun. A, especially being in comedy. That's fucking material. Oh, it was so great. But not invalid. I have to reveal something to the audience. Tyler is a psalm. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. How'd you get into that? Um, all right. So getting into the Psalm thing, I um I was 
essentially being a degenerate working at these bars in like uptown Dallas, which is kind of like the swanky part of Dallas, had this like crazy fucking bar manager whom we would like literally on a Friday night, we would get a baggie, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> like we, we essentially like got to the point where we memorized the numbers of like what a Patron shot costs or what a margarita costs or, or what have you. Right. And homeboy would just like, like straight theft, steal, <laughs> stealing from the bar. And he's my bar manager. Right. Right. Yeah. So this perpetuated setting the example. Yeah. yeah. So this perpetuated for a while, like an, un, like a, just, you know, a long period of time. And, I saw, kind of saw the writing on the wall, and was like, "Yo, I got to get the fuck out." This is I the got, Titanic going down. I gotta yeah, get out of here before this I thing was sinks. like, "Man, I'm gonna grab one of these lifeboats before <laughs> I'm stuck down with the ship, right?" Um, so I do, and I I, I end up helping open this uh, restaurant chain that started in Plano, Texas, called Sixty Vines. Um, so sixty wines, literally on tap. So a gigantic wall of tap wine. That's obnoxious. Yeah, it w- definitely was, right? Um, so <laughs> so they paid for our Psalm Level 1. And for the people that don't know, so there's different ways to become a sommelier. Um, the most prestigious, I guess, is the quartermaster sommeliers, and there's four levels to it. Um, level 1, literally any swinging dick can you know, or whatever can pay to take this class. It's like $500 fucking class. And they essentially give you the answers and it's like your basic intro into like how to smell, how to taste, whatever, whatever, how to, how to sell snake oil to people. Well, not even how to sell really. It's it just sounds like, very, it's just like, hey. you know what? This is this level thing. It sounds very science, Scientology. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> or like karate. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I learned my forms. You know, you pay enough money and you get a, a fucking yellow belt type shit. Right. This guy slays me in terroir. Yeah. Yeah. So you learn about the basics, right? And they paid for that. And so that kind of got you interested too. So we were in Plano, Texas, which is kind of like a, you know, rich, su- it's like one of the most rich suburbs, I think in the United States it was there for about, I guess a year and a half. And then they, they were going to open up one in like downtown, downtown Dallas in uh, the Crescent hotel, which, um, swanky. Oh, like peak swanky. Okay. So like, um, you know, like, uh, the Mavericks, right? So like the, the Crescent hotel has a contract with the NBA for like whomever the visiting team is playing in Dallas. They, they, all, the they all stay at that hotel, right? So you know, it, like, how to, like, poison them and give them shitty food and make them sick for the game. Exactly. So this new 60 Vines they're, that they're going to open up is in the base of this hotel, right? So, like, just, it seemed like dollar signs to me. Absolutely. Like, duh, no, you got like, some athletes with millions of dollars it. coming in? Right. So, um... Hold on, real quick. You got athletes with millions of dollars coming in. I just want to circle back to the Dallas Mavericks because I want to tell you... My favorite NBA player is Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah. Because I admire anyone who could work on a three-pointer in between hunting and gathering and making fire. <laughs> it's a visual joke for you guys out there if you're not yeah, an NBA right. fan. That's hilarious <laughs> if you know what he looks like. Dude, All right, sorry. Dirk is such a staple in Dallas. It's great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, just to illustrate that like it, it was going to be a much more lucrative position moving and helping open – this this new location. The wife and I moved to uh, Uptown, and it's instantly almost sex, dr- sex drugs and fucking rock and roll, dude. Like Uptown. While you're married. Yes. Oh, God. Were we married? Yeah, we were married. All right, point. nice. Um, So she throws down. She's all about it. She's all fucking about it. That's right? good when you well, find somebody like that. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can yeah, roll together. Uh, she can hang. Uh, I know she can hang. You guys came to the comedy yeah, show last night, and we we got kicked yeah. out of a bar at the end of the night. <laughs> not, she was ready to go. Not, she had seltzers uh, on her jacket, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting when you get home, and you're like, where the fuck did you get those, right? <laughs> so um, she's down, whatever. We moved to Dallas, like like proper Dallas downtown, right? And everything is just better and bigger and louder and more expensive. And like I said, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was fucking great. So... Um, with this Psalm Level 1 thing that they provided to us in Plano, uh, I didn't realize that it expired after three years. Oh, God, what a racket. So it expires, right? So if, if you want to proceed on to Level 2 and you exceed the three-year period from passing Level 1, guess what? you got to take Level 1 again, Does right? your little license turn into vinegar? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, you know, what shitty wine does, right? Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Um, a group of friends that were way fucking more serious about wine than I was were like, 
yeah, let's try it. Let's give it a shot. And I was like, I wasn't even really about it. It didn't even fucking phase me. But like my, you know, you just 